In 1993, audiences around the world watched in horror as a small, colorful dinosaur unfurled a brilliant neck frill, hissed like a rattlesnake, and spat streams of blinding venom into the eyes of a doomed man sitting in a rain-soaked jeep. That creature was called Dilophosaurus, and almost everything you saw was fiction. Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park didn't just bring dinosaurs back to life, it created them. The spitting venom, invented. The flamboyant neck frill, pure Hollywood imagination. Even the size was wrong. In the film, Dilophosaurus stood barely four feet tall, a curious, almost comical predator. But here's what the movie didn't tell you. The real Dilophosaurus was a monster, 20 feet long, over 600 pounds of muscle and bone. It stalked the ancient floodplains of what is now Arizona, 200 million years ago, long before T-Rex ever existed. It was one of the first truly large predators to walk the earth. No frills, no venom, just size, speed, and those twin crests along its skull, elegant and terrifying. And yet for decades the world believed the lie. We let Hollywood write the history of a creature that science had already uncovered. Fiction became fact in the public mind. The image replaced the animal. So why does this matter? Because somewhere between entertainment and education, we lost the truth. And the truth is so much stranger, so much more powerful than anything a screenwriter could dream up. Today, we're going to uncover the real story of the Dilophosaurus, the dinosaur that Hollywood lied about. Its name means two-crested lizard, Dilophosaurus weatherillae, a creature forged in deep time, when the world was still learning what monsters could be. 193 million years ago, the early Jurassic period, long before the reign of Tyrannosaurus, before the skies filled with pterosaurs, there was this. The fossil beds of northern Arizona hold its story. The Cayenta Formation, where ancient streams once carved channels through volcanic ash and mud. Here, entombed in stone, paleontologists found the truth. The real Dilophosaurus stood seven meters long, 23 feet from snout to tail, taller than a man at the hip. Weighing perhaps 400 to 500 kilograms, in its time it was a giant, one of the largest predators Earth had yet produced. And those crests, twin ridges of thin bone rising along the length of its skull like parallel crowns, fragile, almost ornamental, Scientists believe they served no function in combat, too delicate to withstand impact. Instead, they were likely instruments of display, visual signals. Perhaps they flushed with blood during courtship, turning vibrant shades to attract mates. Perhaps they identified individuals like fingerprints carved in bone. Communication without sound, identity without words, but beauty concealed contradiction. Dilophosaurus possessed a lightweight skull riddled with air pockets and hollow chambers. Its bones were pneumatic, filled with air sacs connected to its respiratory system, much like modern birds. This made the animal light, agile, built for speed rather than crushing force, and yet its bite was weak, shockingly weak for a predator of its size. Studies of its jaw mechanics reveal a creature that couldn't clamp down with devastating pressure. It couldn't crack bone, couldn't overpower large prey with sheer jaw strength. Instead, it had something else. Dozens of sharp, blade-like teeth. Serrations running along both edges, designed not for crushing but for slicing, for gripping, for cutting through flesh and holding on while the prey struggled and bled. And there was something stranger still, a gap, a peculiar notch where the upper and lower jaws met, creating a kinked profile unique among theropods. This subnarial gap gave Dilophosaurus a face unlike any other predator, a crocodilian echo in a dinosaur's skull. Scientists still debate its purpose. Perhaps it allowed the creature to deliver precise surgical bites. Perhaps it reduced stress on the fragile skull during feeding. So what did such a creature hunt? Small dinosaurs, early relatives of the long-necked sauropods, armored reptiles, fish from the streams, and carrion, the bodies of animals already dead, torn open with those serrated teeth. Evidence suggests Dilophosaurus may have been social. Multiple individuals found in close proximity, trackways showing groups moving together. 
If true, this changes everything. A pack of seven-meter predators, lightweight and fast, working in coordination, that is not a scavenger. That is an apex predator with strategy. For over 60 years, this dinosaur was misunderstood. Early reconstructions depicted it incorrectly. Bones assembled in the wrong positions. Proportions guessed at, entire sections missing. It took decades of careful work, new fossil discoveries, and advances in biomechanical analysis to see Dilophosaurus clearly. To understand what it truly was. A ghost made flesh. A predator sculpted by an ancient world we can never visit preserved only in fragments of stone and the stories we piece together from them. But despite everything we've uncovered, the Dilophosaurus remains a mystery, a creature trapped between myth and science. Every lie contains a seed of truth. In 1993, Steven Spielberg gave the world a monster, a small hissing creature with a colorful frill and venomous spit. It lasted only minutes on screen, but it burned itself into our collective memory. For an entire generation, that was Dilophosaurus. The dinosaur became famous and completely misunderstood. But science doesn't sleep. While Hollywood's version lived on in sequels and video games and childhood nightmares, paleontologists were doing something quieter, something harder. They were listening to the bones. New fossils emerged from the Cayenta Formation, better preserved, more complete. In 2020, a comprehensive anatomical study finally corrected decades of errors. Misaligned vertebrae, incorrectly positioned limbs, phantom features that never existed. Slowly, painstakingly, the real animal came into focus. Not a Hollywood prop, a predator, an evolutionary pioneer. One of the first great carnivores to walk upright, hunt with strategy and display beauty alongside lethality. Fiction gave it fame, science gave it truth, and perhaps that's the way it had to be, because this is how humanity has always learned. We imagine first, we tell stories in the dark, around fires, filling the unknown with monsters and gods and meaning. And then, slowly, we illuminate, we dig, we question, we replace the myth with something even stranger, reality. The Dilophosaurus is more than a cautionary tale about Hollywood distortion. It's a mirror, a reflection of our need to create narratives before we have knowledge. Our desire to populate the emptiness of the past with creatures we can picture, fear and love, even when we get it wrong. Every fossil is a resurrection, not of the animal itself, that's gone, forever unreachable across the void of extinction, but of possibility, of wonder, when a paleontologist lifts a bone from ancient stone, they're not just uncovering evidence. They're performing an act of radical empathy. They're saying, you mattered, you existed, and I will tell your story. For 193 million years, it slept beneath the sands of time. And when we found it, we didn't just uncover a creature. We uncovered a question. How much of what we believe is real? And how much is just a story we told ourselves until we found something better. The Dilophosaurus no longer has to carry Hollywood's fantasy. It can finally be what it always was. A fragment of Earth's deep history, reconstructed through careful hands and curious minds. A predator that ruled a world so alien we can barely imagine it, yet familiar enough that we can trace its bones and understand its life. It is proof that truth survives lies, that reality outlasts mythology and that the greatest stories aren't the ones we invent. They're the ones buried beneath our feet, waiting for someone brave enough to dig. The Dilophosaurus is more than a fossil. It's proof that imagination can keep history alive, but only science can keep it honest.